Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friday live stream. And uh, today, just like the, th the thumbnail and title suggests, we're going to take a look at uh, there is a one of the major indicators that I've taken a look at as far as selling Bitcoin and potentially getting out of the market as it's really coming quite close to what I would consider as a sell indicator. And before we get on, of course, uh, my voice may sound a little bit different, but I'm just getting over the flu. So uh, if it's a little bit uh, off. No, I am not AI generated even though some days I would like to be because it makes my job a lot easier. Anyhow, let's jump into it, shall we? So the first thing is uh, I was taking a look or perusing the different articles that were out there and Cointelegraph had a good one. It talks about how Bitcoin prices interests inches from a new surge at 71K Bitcoin Pi cycle top metric. And we'll get into the actual Pi cycle top and, and the different uh, websites I like to use to, to validate this. But uh, one of the quotes I've read in here, this is from one of the traders, and he says, once Bitcoin breaks the Pi cycle moving average, all bets are off. It's currently consolidating right below it, just like it did in 2020. So if you've been around the channel, you know for quite some time that uh, I have this uh, video that I did, which uh, I talked about the certain indicators that I'm looking for when I'm going to be getting out and stepping down from this channel. Because nothing lasts forever. And I don't think that anybody needs a cheerleader in the bull market. I think people need a cheerleader in the bear market because in the bear market is where all the where all the gains are made. It's not in the bull market. It's not when all the the tourists come in here and we essentially dump on them. Let's be honest. Uh, really, what it comes down to is people are going to need to hear the voice of some type of reason in the bear market when everything crashes and whatever nonsense that has happened in the bull market gets exposed and things start to collapse. FTX, Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi, you name it, it's been done. So there's two videos that I'd like you to watch. Of course, I'm talking about the sell indicators. The first one is uh, when I'm talking about selling 80% of my crypto. And the next one is the stress-free profits uh, when I'm talking about different types of cryptos. One is when we're talking about established ones. The other one is when we're talking about different cryptos and digital assets and prospects that are a little bit newer. So check those out. Links in the description looks just like that. And when I take a look at the Pi Cycle Top, again, we're taking a look at the Pi Cycle Top. It's when the 111-day moving average crosses over the 350-day moving average. And what I used to look at, and actually still do, is look into Bitcoin. Look into Bitcoin is a great website. It's free. It gives you some good information. And uh, you can check it out. Look into Bitcoin. Links in the description. But uh, what I like to use uh, these days is Ben's website, since I get to steal all his information. And I didn't even realize this. There is a... Pi cycle bottom and top. Who'd have thunk it? And uh, just so everybody knows, if you're not familiar with that video, of course, uh, the Pi cycle top retroactively, retrospectively, has called out the tops. I think it was created around 2019. And it came very close in 2021. It actually hit the price of around 60,000 and said that that was the top. Well, we know that wasn't a top, it was 67,000. 777 or 69,000, depending on which uh, exchange that you went to and arbitraged. But uh, in 2017, it called it. And in 2013, it called uh, the double tops. So it, it's been relatively accurate. And again, I'm not going to call the absolute top. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not that great of a chartologist. I will not hit the top. If I get within 60 to 70%, I will be ecstatic. But this bike cycle top, is what I'm looking at as one of the indicators, one of uh, multiple ones. And we see, as we take a look here, let's just zoom in. And yeah, it's looking like it's really closing the gap. Again, when the 350 day moving average crosses over the 111 moving average, that's when we have that aspect. And we can see that uh, it's pretty darn close. So what does this mean? Does this mean that uh, I have to sell everything and get out? It's going to make me really think about it. I know people will say, Rob, that's ridiculous and that's stupid. Why would you do that? There is so much money coming in. There is so much Bitcoin that, of course, is being taken off the exchanges and there's going to be a supply shock and there's going to be all these nation states getting into it and everything else. I'm like, Look, that may be true. That may be true. But the narratives, the narratives are there. And yes, I understand about time frames as far as when... Uh, we hit the all-time lows to the all-time highs, the halving to the next all-time highs. But I'm just trying to tell you that even though there's a narrative, there was this, there was a narrative when I got in 2017, and that didn't pan out. There was the same, well, a different narrative in 2021, and that didn't pan out. 
there's always going to be sell-offs. There's always going to be people that are going to sell. And this is what I'm looking at. So this is just one indicator that I'm looking at. And it looks like it could do it. And also, before we move on, I would like to just say that because this is so close, I didn't know there was a buy cycle bottom. Let me reset the zoom real quick and click on bottom. Actually, if you go to ben, Ben's website and look at this, it doesn't call it perfectly. Like in 2015, it called the bottom at uh, $284, which was pretty close because I think the bottom was like $199, somewhere around there. No, $229, excuse me. And then in 2017, it called it at, what is this? 3,780. So pretty damn close, quite honestly. And then it didn't really do a great job in 2022. It called the bottom at 20,570. But again, I mean, what was the bottom? 15,700? That's still pretty damn good. So when I'm taking a look at this, I'm like, Pi Cycle Top's been relatively somewhat accurate and something to put into your repertoire of taking a look at as far as indicators. So you can make the best financial judgment for yourself to say, you know what? This is just one thing that has taken off. Maybe there, the narrative comes in that, oh, Bitcoin's going to be used as the world reserve currency. <laughs> Maybe this isn't going to pan out for the Pi Cycle Top. It's up to you. I'm just telling you what I'm looking at. And that is one of those things that I say carries heavy weight. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And before we go on and and we sort of talk about, we're going to talk about Cardano, a major partnership and what's going on there. We're going to talk about Solana and we're also going to talk about Chainlink. But before we get in there, I'd like to receive or just say a congratulations to Coinbase for being one of the good guys out there. This is from Paul Grubel. He is the chief legal officer at Coinbase. And he says that they just received this letter from FinCEN, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network that congratulates Coinbase on our substantial contributions to one of seven significant criminal cases to receive the FinCEN's Director's Law Enforcement Award. We appreciate this recognition of our commitment to weeding out bad actors in whatever form and whatever they operate. Now, as Gary Genzer is on the warpath with his dynamic duo of Senator Elizabeth Warren, as they rally against crypto and digital assets, I would just like to take a time out to say congratulations to Coinbase for doing the right things at the right time with the right people. And as these crimes come out, they root them out. So congratulations, Coinbase. That's what I like to see. So now let's get into Cardano. And uh, I should actually have up here. Cardano has been one of those laggards. It's been one of those projects that uh, I personally have invested into. I think could do quite well. I still have the D News stake pool. Links in the description if you want to delegate to that. But uh, there was a major partnership that came out. I thought it was something to uh, be said. Now, when I did yesterday's video, people were talking about it and I just kind of missed it, missed the news. So I wanted to give Cardano holders their due diligence before we get to Solana and Chainlink. So Ada community excited as Huawei cloud infrastructure arrives on Cardano. First of all, what the heck is that? Huawei is a Chinese multinational digital communications tech conglomerate in Bantian District, Shenzhen, Guangdong. I think I nailed that one. And of course, they are major corporations in telecommunications. And they just had or inked a partnership with Cardano. Not so fast, it's not as big as you may think it is. So this is what it is. This is from Ada Whale. Partnership will bring Huawei's cloud infrastructure into the Cardano ecosystem, which is true. And there was a, a tweet from Emergo, which is from the Cardano Foundation, and it was cut off, but here's what it says. Let me just bring this up. Thrilled to announce a strategic partnership with Huawei. Emergo is teaming up to extend support for a Cardano validator node on Huawei Cloud, which is interesting. You know, they're going to do a validator node. That's great. That was, I mean, if, I mean, I remember when, uh, when Google, the platform Google became a enterprise validator for Theta. You know, we talked about that all day long because, you know, Theta is one of the other bags that I actually have and things are going to do quite well. Actually, they're going to do really well as they partner up with Aether, which is a deep in AI project. I think they're going to do quite well, but getting off the, off the topic. So congratulations to Huawei partnering up with Cardano as they make a Cardano validator node on Huawei Cloud, one of the world's largest cloud community companies. This partnership will bring Huawei's cloud infrastructure into the Cardano ecosystem and enable developers to leverage it to build Web3 solutions on Cardano, ultimately driving growth and Web3 adoption across Asia, Pacific, and Africa. Also marks the first step towards a large collaboration between Emergo and Huawei in the future, 
driving the commercial adoption through validator nodes, events, and tech collaborations. They don't exactly say what those new collaborations are, but we'll see how it goes as it pans out as we move into 20, the end of 2024 and 2025. So congratulations, ADA holders. Finally, there's something to be excited about. Hey, good for you guys. Well, good for us, I should say. I actually hold it myself. So now we talked about Cardano. We have to talk about the flip side because I don't know what it is about Cardano and, and uh, ADA and uh and soul or solana seems like they just have a beef with each other every time i bring one or the other up the comment section gets crazy so i'm going to be balanced today congratulations solana looks like you're trying to fix the congestion problem anza releases proposed congestion fixes on solana devnet asks validators to upgrade on testnet so right now of course cardano everybody's laughing because like oh yeah just tell the tell the devs to to take the cartridge out and blow on it and put it back in a little more complex than that. So here's what we got. Solana's validator cli client team, Anza, released proposed congestion fixes in version 1.8.11. Is now deployed to DevNet, recommended for use on testnet. Please upgrade ASAP to help us start analyzing the effects on the proposed congestion fixes. So hopefully this will fix that monstrous congestion, which we've had failures of 70% plus of the different transactions that are on Solana. Hey, I'm a Solana holder, I'm a Cardano holder, I'm a Chainlink holder, and it's like 60 other different cryptos. So I'm with you on this one. So great. Although there was this last sentence that I gotta tell you, I wouldn't be bragging about this. Phantom, Solana's most widely used wallet, noted that transaction success rates have improved a lot already ahead of the patch. That's good news, I like that. Project stated its metrics showed that transactions were successfully nearly 90% of the time. <laughs> Yeah. So listen, I know right now everybody's whatever chain you're at, you know, you're like, ah, this one's way better than that one. This one's fantastic. Look, I think we really should try to bring each other up because really it's us versus a lot of different people that are out there that really call Bitcoin, crypto digital assets, just a passing fad and a tulip bubble and just a waste of, of technology. So when one wins, I think we should all congratulate. I'm trying to foster that type of relationship. But uh, congratulations, to everybody. I think we're in the step in the right direction. And I truly believe as time goes on that it's not just about one chain. The future is multi-chain. And I could be wrong. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. But there's one more altcoin to talk about, Chainlink. Now, this one I think is quite big. Chainlink, when I got into it, just an oracle. Essentially, the ability to pull out outside data and resources into the blockchain because it was very difficult to do that. And Sergey essentially solved that with Chainlink. And it's one of my, my bigger bags and one of the bigger bags I still have right now. I still believe in Chainlink and what it's doing. And I've heard from other people that right now, Chainlink is not just an oracle. It's essentially becoming a layer zero. And this, I think, is big. Introducing Transporter. This is from the Chainlink blog, a hyper-secure bridging app powered by Chainlink. What's this doing? Users are now able to bridge supported tokens, including ETH, USDC, Link, and more across eight blockchains. That's big. Starting with Arbitrum, Avalanche, Base, BNB Chain, Ethereum, Optimism, Polygon, and WeMix. So the big question is, well, what does this do? Because I like people say, well, I got this, this bridge. I use that bridge. I use this bridge and that bridge. This one, apparently, is supposed to be super secure. Put it through the paces. See what actually happens. Do some test transactions. See what actually it can do. But when Chainlink does something, they test the heck out of it. So hopefully, this is the answer. So the need for secure cross-chain connectivity. Oh, and then one thing before I before I go on, when they talk about CCIP, uh, you know, chain link CCIP, that's cross-chain interoperability protocol. So what they're trying to do, again, I believe multi-chain is the, the answer, and that's what I think Chainlink is trying to say here. So the need for secure cross-chain connectivity, hundreds of blockchains, layer two, side chains, app chains, and more. And that's the truth. There's just so many out there. It's hard to even keep them straight. And when Bitcoin comes in with all their L2s, watch out because that's gonna be even bigger. And I think that's the next wave, but I'll go back to this article. This was interesting to me. Almost 50% of all value hacked in Web3 is due to cross-chain hacks. And if you wanna take a look at that, just go to DeFi Llama and click on hacks. And here's all the data. Did you know, whoops, because I can't, let me bring this up. There we go. Look at all the hacks that were, of course, as the market starts to really pick up, on July 31st, up to this point, 675 million, almost a billion in hacks, 298 million, 
of course, it's all around when, when, of course, the market picks up. What do you notice over here? October 3rd, 2023, there was still a huge amount of hacks going on. And of what is it really has to do with Chainlink? Well, like it says right here, it's all due to cross-chain hacks. And that's what they're trying to solve here with Transporter. So anyhow, coming back to this, I also want to ask you everybody a question who's watching the video, or if you're watching the, the replay, it doesn't matter. It breaks it down to the amount lost <clears throat> and to the protocol within it. The techniques that was actually happening. As I scroll through this, what do you notice? What do you see here? Well, here's Bitcoin. There's one. Here's Avalanche. 2.6 million. Bitcoin Cash. What the heck? What I notice here is that there's two things. First, I see a lot of Ethereum. And I see a lot of Layer 2 solutions. Does that mean that Ethereum and Layer 2 solutions are bad? No. What it says to me is that people are using Ethereum and Layer 2 solutions a lot. Is that what it's going to be in the future? Anybody's guess. But I can just tell you for a lot of these hacks and these bridge hacks, Arbitrum, Ethereum, Optimism, Polygon. It's a lot. Of course, that's what we have. But again, it's a double-edged sword. What it means is everybody's using it, and maybe they're not using it as well as they should. And let me be crystal clear. This is an ecosystem issue. This is not the base chain issue. This is somebody who built on top of Ethereum for whatever it is and didn't work out because they screwed up. So let that, let that uh, kind of make sure we understand that so no one can say, Rob's spreading FUD because he's saying Ethereum sucks. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying that a lot of people are using that. And a lot of people aren't doing it right. So to continue on, the multi-chain ecosystem needs cross-chain infrastructure that is hyper-reliable, a solution that raises the bar for cross-chain security ease of use, interoperability protocol that's built to last, not just to launch. So what's Transporter? Web app for crypto users that easily and securely transfer the token and messages between different blockchain. Every transporter transfer is powered end to end by Chainlink cross-chain interoperability protocol or CCIP. And I put a link in the description. Here's the website. You can use it right now. Transporter IO. And you can go through all of it. It talks about even the different the chains that they're using. They're all right there. Actually, I've never let's see. What does this view all say? Oh wow. So you got Arbitrum Avalanche base. What were we just talking about? Yeah, WeMix. Here's all the tokens. It's a lot of tokens. That's not that much. But then if you go over here where it says to where is it? On the upper right hand corner where it says launch app, if you launch it. You can start bridging right now using Chainlink. And I think that's something to watch out. Even if you're not a big believer in Ethereum or the Layer 2 solutions, I get you. I understand. Maybe you might want to start to take a very heavy look at Chainlink and what's going on, especially right before the Bitcoin halving, because I believe that is a time for the Goldilocks zone. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then just to finish up real quick, as again, a public service announcement. No one likes this, but I have to tell you, uh, your taxes are due. I'm sorry. You have to pay your taxes so Gary Gensler can get his money so he can bring Wells notices uh, against decentralized exchanges and centralized exchanges because that's what we do here in America. Sorry. Anyhow, there's a great video <clears throat> uh, from Mark Kohler. I linked in the description. He is a lawyer and a CPA, and he talks about why you need to file a tax extension, which you can do right now. Essentially, what he talks about is it lowers your probability of getting an audit. So watch that video. And there's another video that he did, which was really good, where he talked about the 10 uh, criteria for uh, loopholes. And of course, legal loopholes of how the rich stay rich. So watch those videos. I ex put that one in the description. You can check that out. And then one of the things he talks about, and I talk about as well, is CoinLedger. Again, if you're looking for a software, use CoinLedger. Link in the description. You don't have to use it. But if you don't use it, you only get 10% off. So it's up to you. And then lastly, lastly, before we go in the Q&A, Katamoto. <laughs> Katamoto. And the reason I bring this up is because, let's be honest, meme coins are for gambling, right? If we're out here to save the world, that's great. But if you want to put 20 bucks on red, well, why don't you just gamble a little bit? I can't give a financial advice. I can't even give you gambling advice. I'm not a professional gambler. But Katamoto is one of the first BNB chain, Binance chain, meme coins, and it's being launched on Tencent. 
And I did a deep dive. Well, it's not really a deep dive video. What can you deep dive on a meme coin? I'm just talking about how this one's, it's pretty interesting. Just watch the video. It's like eight minutes. I linked in the description. It's over on Dan Degen. I don't put degenerate stuff on this channel. This is for the meat and potatoes, very safe stuff. But over on Dan Degen, uh, you either uh, make a lot of money or you lose everything. It's pretty much no in between. So check out that video. Hey, see where it leads you. And then, of course, this will be it right here. And then also, for my astute followers who are watching this video right now, I uh, I made a deal with Tencent. And I said, hey, like, for for you to get into this, you have to buy tokens of, to the, of the Tencent token, just so everybody knows. And some are like, I don't really want to do that. I said, hey. How about if we do this? Why don't you just let some of my subscribers get whitelisted and they can buy this on opening day, which I think is 16th of April. So like right now, the buying process for the launch pads going through, if you want to be whitelisted and just go right to pancake swap and have to you know bypass all the 10 set stuff, you can do that. I have a link in the description and it's called the Katamoto whitelist. And all you gotta do is fill this out and it's first come first serve on the last round on the 16th of April. And you can, if you are so inclined, you could buy up uh, this meme coin before everybody else does. So uh, either you're welcome or you hate me for it because it's a gamble. But that's not for me to say because this isn't financial advice. <laughs> that's it for today.